Hello everyone and welcome to this video lecture that begins a brief series on the three ways to communicate scale. We were just looking at scale as the size relationship between a globe and the actual planet. Well, whether you're talking about globes or whether you're talking about maps, you always have to communicate that size relationship between the map or the globe and whatever it is representing. And as it turns out, there are three major ways to communicate scale. In this video, we're going to focus on the first one, which is a representative fraction. One way to communicate scale is through the use of a representative fraction. And we already began looking at these when we calculated the scale of the globe. We calculated the scale as a representative fraction. So here is an example of a representative fraction right here, 1 to 24,000. Here is the 1, the colon, which is read as 2, T-O, and 24,000. So 1 to 24,000. This is a perfectly good representative fraction. And it means that one of any unit on the map represents 24,000 of the same units in the real world. And we said this is a very valuable uh, reason to communicate scale in this way because it is unitless. The person who is using this scale can choose what system of measurement and what unit they would like to use. So one inch on the map represents 24,000 inches in the real world. That's completely true. It is also true that one centimeter on the map represents 24 centimeters in the real world. As long as I put the same unit on both sides of the representative fraction, I'm good. So both of these are true statements that can be said about the scale because of the scale's representative fraction of 1 to 24,000. Over here on this side, the 1 is the units on the map. This is the map units, one unit on the map. You always give the units on the map first. And then over here, you give the real world unit. So one unit on the map, 24,000 of the same unit in the real world. Take a look at this. One inch on the map represents 24,000 centimeters in the real world. This is not true because I have put inches on one side of the representative fraction and I have put centimeters on the other. So this is not a true statement. Here again, one centimeter on the map represents 24,000 miles in the real world. Also not a true statement. I'm putting different units on the different sides of the fraction. You can use any unit though. So here are cubits. We don't typically measure in cubics and cubits anymore, but we could. Uh, and if we wanted to, then we could certainly use this fraction to do it with. That's perfectly valid. Here, if we wanted to measure in L's as well, we can do that. That's also perfectly valid. Any unit that you want can be used with a representative fraction as long as you put the same unit on both sides. Representative fractions are called fractions because that's what they are. Here I have 1 to 24,000. I could rewrite it as a fraction, 1 over 24,000. That's no problem at all. In fact, sometimes you see representative fractions expressed in this way. Map units over real-world units. If you would prefer to think of the representative fraction in this way, you're perfectly welcome to. In fact, when you write it like this, you can easily see why the representative fraction is unitless. Because if I put inches up here in the numerator and inches down here in the denominator, then they cancel out. Because I can cancel anything that's in the numerator and in the denominator, leaving me with this unitless measure. Likewise, of course, I can add back in whichever I prefer. So as long as I write the same unit on the top and on the bottom, you can see that I will create a valid representative fraction, a valid statement of the scale. So thinking of it as a fraction like this may help you understand exactly what's going on. Very importantly, representative fractions always begin with a 1. We always give a representative fraction by saying one unit on the map represents something in the real world. So all of these are valid representative fractions, 1 to 100,000, 1 to 10,000, 1 to 3 million. These over here are not. You need to do some more mathematics to simplify this so that you have one map unit or a 1 in that numerator. So we don't give representative fractions in this way. All right, so that's the basics of representative fractions. We'll take a look at some other ways to represent scale next.